Okay, so we're looking at using um, Pro, the Provia app uh, called, uh, well, it's through EntryLink, but it's actually an app. So we're gonna look at using that to build windows and doors right now. Um, we're, we, just had, uh, we just had everybody download the Provia app um, from the, you know, just the uh, app store. And the settings we're gonna look at right now. So um, I'll share my screen, uh, but these settings are crucial to making sure that the app's running correctly and populating with the proper pricing. So can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll so this, is, this is what your screen needs to look like. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm there. To do yeah. all three of those look the same and then pr show pricing automatically is toggled on? It is now. Okay, now I need you to hit synchronized over on the bottom left. Done. Done. <clears throat> so synchronize, okay, done. And then we should all be on this page. So it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to use. Um, as, you, as you can see down at the bottom, we have doors, windows, stone, roofing about us. Um, so obviously the only thing we're gonna mess with are doors and windows. Um, We'll walk through doors. Some of this stuff may be foreign to y'all because we haven't really talked about doors too much, but y'all are going to need to run doors as soon as you start running windows. So um, we'll go through both. We'll build examples of each. Um, again, this is one of those things where we're going to give you the basics, but especially with doors, we could sit here for the next six hours and do nothing but doors. And one, you'll hate me, and two, you'll only remember about 30% of it. So we're not going to do that. We're going to show you the basics and how to run through it. It's, it's, I'll tell you, I mean, building Provia is so much easier than building any other window just because of how simple it is to walk through the process. So from that regard, this is super, super intuitive, super easy, and it really is, it's really dumb proof. So we're gonna start with doors and I'll show you how to walk through those. We'll do a storm door and then we'll do windows. <clears throat> Sound good? Okay. Actually, we'll have to do two, three, three doors. We'll have to do a hinge door. We'll do a storm door and we'll do a gliding door, gliding, uh, sliding door. Do you want me just to watch your screen or you want me to walk through it in my app as you do it? Now, watch my screen because you're going to have a recording of this when we're done that you can walk through and build your own at that point. But right now, I just want you to watch and try to soak okay. it in. Sounds good. Sit back and enjoy the show. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is click on doors down at the bottom. And it's going to pull up this. So we're going to start with an entry door or a hinge door. We'll do a storm door and then we'll do a gliding door, sliding door. So obviously, just click on entry doors. Entry door designer is what I'm looking for. There's a photo gallery here too, which is kind of cool. If you want to be able to show your client some examples. So don't forget about that because that's a pretty cool resource that's in here and it's grouped by product line. So Signet's the Signet is their high end door. The craftsman. So Signet is for sure their flagship product. So you have all these pictures in here that are really nice, high res, you know, really, really good looking pictures. Can you point out where that, uh, that photo gallery is again? Uh, yeah, so entry doors. Oh, entry door designer, brochures and video, and then photo gallery. 
All right, thank you. Okay, so we're going to go in the entry door designer, which is the first bullet right under entry doors. And then this is our beginning. So you would have done your inspection. You saw me do that out at Dina's house, Dwayne. So you kind of got a handle there. Okay, that's I something did. else. That, that's something else that I need to record. So you've done your door inspection. And now we're going to build the door. You've taken your measurements. You know if it's in swing, out swing, hinge, you know, where the hinge is going to be. And now we're going to build that door. So we can do single door. We can do French entry, which is two handle sets. See that in the middle? There's a patio door double which is gonna have a screen. The right side, is, we're looking at it, the right side is fixed. Can y'all can, uh, mute? I'm getting some weird feedback. Thank you. Um, so the right side is fixed as we're looking at it. The left side is operable and you have your screen. So notice the difference. There's a, an important distinction there. French entry door is, in my opinion, that's how these, you're paying more so if you have the same size opening and you're putting a hinged door or a gliding door in those in that opening, the hinged door is going to be more expensive to probably 20 to the tune of 20 to 30 percent. So the reason you pay more for a hinged door is to have the French look. I don't like selling these. You're paying more for something that, in my opinion, looks like garbage. If you need a screen, do a sliding door. That's how I try to direct people because when you have, it's just cumbersome, it's it's unattractive, and you're paying more for it. You know, think about it. You got to open a hinge door, then you got to slide a screen. You know, it's just it's not practical. Ryan, is every patio double gonna have a screen? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So, and that's one of the major differentials between a patio door and a French. French doors do not have screens. Ah. Make sense? Yes. So we're just basically working off the assumption that if it's a patio double, it's going to have a screen unless it's a French door. Correct. And, and like I said, if, you know, in your discovery, you want to talk to them. Or are you looking for a screen? Do you want a screen, no screen? And if they want a screen, you need to go down the route of, hey, have you considered doing a gliding door? It'll save you some money. It's a little bit more copacetic, you know, because both doors are sliding. You don't have it, one that's hinged that you have to open and then another one that you have to slide. So it just makes more sense. Okay. And so in that case, we would just exit out of this door and go to sliding. Yep. Well, yeah, you shouldn't be this far. I got you, you. Know, you should have you should have talked to him about that during the discovery, during your inspection. And you know. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm tracking. Okay. So that's a patio door. I'm not even gonna do one of these because again, you should I, I just don't believe in doing it. I've done a couple for clients and they didn't really love them, you know? So I just, it's just, you know, it's, it's the, the whole point of French doors like this is it is, it's an elevated door. It's meant to be grand. It's meant to be kind of exquisite. You know, it's meant to be the focal point of a room. So why would you do that and fix one side and put a screen in front of it? You know what I mean? It's like all the benefits, all the beauty, all the elegance of a French door you're undermining by making it this. And that's what I tell people. That's exactly what I tell people in the home. A French door system is meant to be like a grand entrance. You know, both, both doors swing open and here we are. Or there it is, the outdoors, you know, the back patio, whatever, the pool. So when you do one of these things, it's like, what the heck? You're paying more and getting less, basically. So I, I'm just not a big fan. 
and you tell that story to people and I don't think, I can't think of anybody that's not resonated with, oh yeah, you're right. Let's go to, you know, let's go to a gliding door or, oh yeah, no, you're right. Let's do a, a double French door, with two sets of hardware that looks beautiful. It looks elegant. It looks elevated as opposed to this. This is like what a builder does. <laughs> that's, that's the best way, you know, that's the best way to sum that up. This would be a great design for a builder which means they didn't put too much thought into it. So we have our single, we have our French. They're really the same. We can do one of each probably um, just for giggles. So we measured the door. We know what they want. So we'll just keep it simple because some of this can get super complicated with all the glass options. So we're just gonna keep it simple. We'll build one of these, we'll build a double and then we'll move on. So you have your single patio French and patio door triple. We're going to do a single side lights. We're going to say no side lights. If you wanted side lights, that's how you do it. Hinge side, obviously, you have a hinge side and you have a knob side. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Transom, rectangular, elliptical, arch with extended leg. Very rarely will you do that. Here in Texas, you know, the side lights aren't rarely, are very rarely connected to the door. Usually there's brick or stone, something between them. Not to say you won't do them, but generally we don't have transoms and side lights that are connected. That's just not a Texas thing. You'll do it, but not as frequently as you'll see a door, a little ledge of rock or brick, and then the windows. That's what you'll see more commonly. And so in that case, when they're not connected, we would not be replacing the side lights. We would be replacing the door. You would be replacing the side lights with the window. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Frame saver, or excuse me, frame type. Um, the only one you're really going to focus on is probably frame saver frame. What that is, is it is a composite frame 16 inches up on both sides, on the sides of the door. So it doesn't rot from the ground up, from the threshold up 16 inches. It's a composite frame that's guaranteed not to rot. Are you both clear on that? Because that's a huge selling point when we're talking to people. No, Ryan, I'm not clear. Repeat that, please. So you, you know where the threshold of the door is? Yes, I do. It's at the bottom. Okay, so go up on the sides, on each side where the jam is. Mm -hmm. 16 inches, that's composite. So on each side of the frame, 16 inches is composite? Yes, correct. With the okay, I, I got you now. So... Nine and a half times out of 10, you're going to select frame saver frame. Door operation. Just, so this is where. Clarity, for clarity, what is the bottom 16 inches made of? It's just a composite material. It's like a, it's like a hardy plank basically, but it's more PVC based. Okay. And then, so the rest of the frame is wood. Yes. Okay. Got it. And that's sim simply for durability reasons. Strictly durability, because that's where most doors rot is right there at those cracks, right at the threshold, because water just sits there. Okay, gotcha. We good? Yes. yes. Okay, so now here your swing, everything with windows and doors. A, a common terminology is O-S-L-I. It's an acronym, outside looking in. So this is confusing because the way we view everything is from the outside looking in. The way that the homeowner views everything is from inside looking out. And it makes a difference in terms of which way windows are gonna slide, which way casements will open, um, which way doors will open. So you gotta, you gotta be careful with people because their, their frame of mind, their perspective is different than ours. 
So all of the next thing we got to do here is choose our door operation. So this is a right hand in swing. And notice up here, see, see the left picture? See how I'm looking at the inside right now? Yep. That's the inside and the outside. This is the outside. So as I change these, it changes which way the hardware, which side the hardware is on. Most, I mean, all front doors are going to be in swings. Uh, the difference with in swing and out swing, in swing is generally it's a little less secure. So if you have somebody concerned about security, you might talk to them about out swing. The, the, main, the way to rationalize this to people is on an in swing, guess what? The door is meant to swing inward. On an outswing, the door is meant to swing outward. So generally, with, with an inswing, all of your weather protections, all of your stops, you know, where the door is supposed to stop, everything's to the outside, right? Because the door swings inward, which means it can be more easily breached inward than an outswing. See how that makes sense? Yes. On the, on the flip side of that, on an outswing, all the stops, all the weather strips, all the elements to make the door secure are on the inside, which means you can't come up to that door and kick it inward. So again, if you have somebody concerned about security, you can have the, that discussion with them. Generally, outswings are a little bit more uh, a little bit more secure than in swings. Now, what you don't want to do is if you don't have, if you have a door on the back of a house and it's just a, you know, a straight side of the house and a door with no cover, no patio, no awning, you typically don't want to do an outswing because that door is going to get water. As opposed to it being under a patio or a porch. And generally you don't want an outswing exposed to watershed for the exact same reason as what I just explained. All of the weather elements are inside, they're not outside. So there's more chance for water to penetrate and get through to the inside area of the door where all the weather stripping and all the, the stop elements are. Does that make sense? Yeah. So an in-swing door is more secure against the outside elements. An outswing door is more secure against intruders. Correct. Okay. And if and if security is one of their main things, why they're having us out, you know, that's a suggestion. But then we also need to talk about hardware, you know, because we have multi-point hardware that is the best of the best. It's it's going to add about nine hundred bucks to the door. But if they're worried about security, putting a multi-point on there, that's going to be by far the best thing that they can do. So that's because you just go ahead. That's a, that's a solution that we can suggest if they're concerned about security and it's not under an awning or some sort of covering. Uh, the multi-point. Yeah. So we could do an in-swing if it's let's say it's on the back of the house and there's no cover, mm -hmm. you can do an in-swing with multi-point hardware if, if the concern is security. Correct. Okay. Yeah, because with that multi-point, you're not going to be able to breach a multi-point. You're going to have to break through the glass. Okay. And we'll look at why when we get to the hardware aspect. <laughs> okay, so everything we do for windows and doors from this point forward is outside looking in, O-S-L-I. Which means when you're in the house doing your measuring and you're talking about which way a window is going to open if it's a casement or which way a window is going to slide if it's a glider, you need to let them know, hey, everything we do in construction is outside looking in. We're clearly in the inside of a house and your perspective is inside looking out. So that's what we're going to go with. 
And just know mine's, my terminology is gonna be opposite of yours. The terminology that you're gonna see on the paperwork is gonna be opposite of what you think it will be. And that's great. That's exactly how we want it. Ryan, quick question, just for clarity's sake. In the home, are we, are, is the client looking at this page as we're designing the door? Yeah, on doors, yes. Windows, you can use it to show them. But doors, you're, you're building this with the client. Okay. On no. windows, it's different because you're carrying this thing around and you're measuring 10, 15, 20, 30 windows. Yeah. So you may show them, hey, here's what the color looks like, but they're not watching you build windows. With doors, they're watching you build the door because you can kind of change the design, the color, the style, the glass as we go. And it's way easier to do that with them looking at it. So they're watching the price change as we, as we go. Correct. Okay. And I kind of like that because it's built in price conditioning. Okay. You can always turn that off on, remember on the settings part that we first did where it shows that little toggle switch show price automatically. If you toggle that off, you won't be able to see the price. <clears throat> which makes it hard if you want to, if somebody's like, oh, well, how much more does that glass cost? Then you don't know. So then you got to save it, go in and look at the price, remember the price, go back out, rebuild a new glass, and then compare it to that, do that process all over again, and then compare it to that price, the first price. So it makes it, it makes it pretty complicated. Plus, you know, again, I think there's value to them being able to see what it costs so they're not you know, caught off guard. And again, that, that price, Ryan, is just for the door and the hardware. What is all? Obviously, no, that's, no, no. that's sign sealed, delivered. That's install everything. Installed and everything. Oh, okay. Good deal. All right. But that's retail. There's no discount. So, you, you know, sure. just FYI. Okay, so you've picked the handed, you've picked which way it's gonna go. Um, we'll just add a storm door and do it now. So if you're doing a combination door and storm door, <clears throat> you can do add a storm door. In here, size storm door to fit brick mold opening, size storm door to fit jam opening. <clears throat> Most of the time you're gonna do it to fit the brick mold opening, which would be like covering the whole door. If you do it to fit the jam, it's going to be inside the brick mold, which we do occasionally, but not frequently. So we'll leave it on brick mold opening. We'll come back and do the storm door. We'll finish the door next. And then you just hit next. Here, it's pretty easy. What are your measurements of the slab? You know, 36 by 80 is the standard front door. You'll have back doors that are 34, 32, sometimes 30, sometimes 28. But front doors are generally 98% of the time going to be 36 inches wide and then either 80 inches tall or 96 inches tall. 80 inches is six foot eight inches tall. 96 inches is obviously eight feet tall. Are y'all still there? Yeah, we're here, but it stops. Yeah, there it goes. I got a phone call, so it kicked me out. Oh my God, it's one of these. This person's gonna keep calling until I pick up, I love it. <clears throat> so did you get that? 80 inches is six foot eight inches tall, which is a standard. 96 is eight feet tall. Set, uh, 84 is seven feet tall, which we rarely do. Got it. Okay, so I put, my, I put my size in here, whatever it may happen to be. I'm going with 36 by 80 and then I hit next. Now you have to choose your style. So embark, we're never gonna do an embark. Those doors are like 30 grand. It's the most efficient, it's pretty cool. It's the most efficient door in fabrication today. Like there's not a, a more efficient door than this door right here. 
pretty cool. We don't need it in Texas. It's meant for cold elements. So we're looking at Signet as the high end. And within Signet, you got a cherry skin, mahogany skin, oak, fir, knotty alder, and smooth. I'm not gonna get into all those because within each one, there's all these different styles. You're just gonna have to go through and play with it and you know, start to remember, oh, what style is available in each skin. But that's, that's the first thing you're asking them is what skin type do you want? What kind of grain texture are you looking for? And obviously this is their flagship door. So you can do a cherry, mahogany, oak, fir, knotty alder, and they're gonna pay for it. You know, these are more, these are a high-end designer door. Which all have different styles of doors, you know, that they can do. All kind of super modern and crazy stuff. Okay, the heritage is the next step down from there. In, in either, again, this is part of your discovery, do you want grain texture on the door or do you want it to look smooth? You saw me do that with Dina, Dwayne. Because yeah, it's right. different. If, if you're gonna stain the door, the only option you have is wood grain. If you're gonna paint the door, you're gonna pay two, 300 bucks more for wood grain. If you're gonna paint the door, I'd recommend you go with smooth save the money. You're not going to see the grain anyways as, as much with paint. So just go smooth skin door and save two, 300 bucks. And that's the, that's the dialogue you have with the client. And if it resonates with them, they'll for sure let you know, oh yeah, yeah, no, let's do whatever we can to save some money or no, that's okay. I still want to see the grain texture in my door. Perfect. You can go back to wood grain. <clears throat> Vantage is a step below heritage and all we have is smooth. There is no, so if you're doing a back door and you know they don't want it stained, they don't need wood grain, you're gonna save a couple hundred bucks by going with Vantage and doing it that way. And I think it's Vantage. Yeah, with Vantage though, look at you only got two styles, no custom sizing. So it's, it's kind of meant to be a cookie cutter door, which for most people on the back of their house, it's a pretty good option. It's going to save you, you know, three, probably two, 300 bucks. But there is no custom sizing. You got 32, 36, and that's all she wrote. So Vantage is one step below. Then we get into our steels. So you get your legacy steel with smooth or grain which is pretty awesome. We have some of these in the showroom. You, you all need to get by there and look at it or definitely on Thursday for the team meeting, you need to see this. It's pretty impressive. The fact that they can put a grain texture in steel. It's pretty amazing. So these are 20 gauge. So these are thicker. And then we drop down to 24 gauge, which again, is your more basic. It's like the Vantage equivalent. Limited sizes and all you have is smooth. There is no texture in these styles. <clears throat> Got it? Any questions there? Sounds pretty good. So I'll build in a signet. We'll just assume that we're going to choose Naughty Alder, which is my favorite. We're going to do panel planks. And then they get to pick the stain. You'll have samples of all these. So we can do different inside and outside. That's pretty cool. So you could do a red velvet inside or outside and a Windy City inside if you wanted to. It, it jacks the cost up, but you can do it if you want. Actually here it doesn't, that's weird. On all your other doors, it will create a price difference if you go with a different interior and exterior color. 
what, what's that yellow uh, triangle down next to the price? So if you touch it, it says color may vary slightly due to the creative hand applied finish given each door a unique age to look. Ah. So it's just some sort of disclaimer, but I'm glad you brought that up because over here you got a product description. So you can see exactly what you have built, any warnings or errors. You can look at your sizing to get exact sizing. You can get all of your energy performance, which is helpful for a lot of people. Privacy, we don't have glass in the store, but if you needed to see on a zero to 10 scale, what is the privacy rating on the glass they selected? This is where you'd come right here. How did you navigate to this screen? Just by hitting that arrow or that yellow triangle. Gotcha. And then pricing, you can see the broken out price. And then if you wanted to toggle that off while you're shopping, you just click that and the client won't be able to see that price. <clears throat> okay, so we got our color. Don't worry about pre-fit cladding. We're never gonna do that. Don't worry about caulking. And then I hit next. Now we're hardware. So the first thing with hardware, we're gonna ask them what kind of finish do they want? Look around the house. Well, you're, I noticed the pulls on all your cabinetry in the kitchen is silver. You know, we're kind of in the area where we can see the kitchen. Do you want it to be sat nickel to match the pulls and all the, the, the hardware that you have in your kitchen? You know, little things like that just show that like, wow, this guy's a professional. So look around, if it's by a dining room table, what, what is their chandelier? What, you know, what, what color, what finish is their interior lighting? Yeah, probably nickel would look the best, but so that's the first thing. And all you're doing is asking these questions based in the order it's coming up in the app. Make it easy on yourself. So we got sat nickel. Within sac nickel, I'm just going to click that first box that says Georgian lock set. And now here are all your options. Generally, unless they want it, something super fancy or something like a push button, like the third option. Um, here's your multi point. We'll get into multi point in a second here. But these are all your basic. You know, generally these are all your back door or side door, non front entry door hardware. This is generally your front door hardware, right? It's a little bit nicer. Um, you wouldn't do this on a back door generally. This is strictly for the front door. And then you get into some of these electronic keypad where there's only one. These are all super bougie. Like these are gonna be really expensive hardware. Um, and quite honestly, rarely does someone use something like this. It's just not normal. Um, now, real quick, I'm going to show you. It's going to take me a second to get there, but just bear with me. Uh, Dealer door, why don't I have that in there? Hold on a second. There we go. So this is multi-point hardware. And this, if, if you hear somebody, you know, you'll get it. You'll get these calls where, you know, oh, I just got broken into. Okay, well, you know, security is probably going to be high on their list. So multi-point system is exactly what you see right here. And this is in your Provia catalog. So the multi-point system, see that entire facing of the door 
is a huge, really thick stainless steel plate with a super like high powered locking mechanism. And instead of just locking in one place or two places, <clears throat> there's an upper lock point, a lower lock point, and then your big old deadbolt in the middle. So there you can see Trillium multi-point locking system provides more than just security. It offers homeowners better door closure and sealing than a single point lock. It has three one-inch deadbolts that latch with a deadbolt throw. Deadbolts include anti-saw hardened steel pin. A solid I-beam runs the full length of the lock and increases the strength and precision of the lock. Latch and deadbolt release with a single downward movement. So you actually operate or initiate this with the hardware. Top and bottom latch design allows for door misalignment. 3 sixteenths of an inch pull in when dead bolted. So you actually have to pull the door in and engage the lock that way. And that's how tightly that's sealed. And it kind of shows you all those different features. <clears throat> but when this, like I said, when this sucker's engaged, the only way you're getting through that door is by breaking the glass. So this is why, like I said, it adds about 900 bucks to the door. But if security is a big deal for people, this is, this is a must have because it's gonna make that door basically unbreachable unless you were to break the glass. Any questions on multi-point? Y'all still have my screen, right? Yes. Good, thank God. Yes. So any questions on multi-point? Man, that's, that's serious. Yeah. <laughs> Comparative to a, a normal hardware, and that's why you can tell it costs 900 bucks because it's, it's a bad dude, you know, it's a bad dude setup. It's not like your Home Depot hardware. But in here, there's really good pictures of all the other hardware if you need to show somebody that. This is the other style of uh, multi-point. I just don't like this hardware as well as the other stuff. Yeah. This is, you know, that's, in my opinion, a little better. So I always stick to the trilinium. I don't do the hoppy so much. But same idea, they're both equally as secure, same system. And then here's all the hardware styles. If they want to see blown up versions, you can always reference this catalog. And have all these styles available to for you know really high res photos that they can look at. So we good with that. We can go back to the app. Any questions? No, no, I think we're good. Or I'm good. Yes, Wayne? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Good. Okay, we'll go back to the app. So here we are, we're picking back up. We're gonna go here and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go here. And then you can show them what that looks like. So generally you want the style of hardware to match the door. So something, you know, that has scrolly kind of really more decorative or ornate. This is a good, because see how the, the discussion, the back part of the, the door, the hardware that meets the door is called your discussion. So see how the discussion on this is kind of scrolled. The discussion on this is very geometric. It's very rectangular. The discussion on these is very oval. So match your door style, put some thought into it, match your door style with your hardware. I, on this door all day long, I'm gonna choose this because look at what we got. It's all vertical lines, aside from that soft arch up top, everything is very geometric, it's very rectangular, it's very linear. So I'm gonna choose this hardware. On a door that's 
you know, super scrolly or it has a lot of embossment to it. A lot of like flowing arch type stuff. I'm going to use that one. But with this door, that just looks like garbage. It looks like two different timepieces. And then on something where it has a rounded glass or an oval, I'm going to choose this hardware, which is going to align with the door. With this, it looks like trash. That just doesn't look right. So help people with that. You know, they're spending six grand on a door. Help direct them with these finer details that they're not even going to think to think of. Here, you don't mess with the back set. You don't mess with the prep. So we just selected our hardware. <clears throat> so basically whenever you choose the outside hardware, it's gonna match it with the, it's gonna match the inside. No, you, you select it. Okay. So here's your outside. I can do a knob, I can do this, I can do that, or I can do that. Okay. So you select both of these or let them do it. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. You can do a peep site. A knocker, a knocker viewer, or a colonial knocker. Looks like a bottle opener. I don't know what's going on there. So if you wanted a peep site, you just put it in there. Prep only, just keep standard prep. Now we got a peep site in the door. If you wanted a kick plate, you can select the kick plate, which is awful. You can do a mail slot, which sometimes you might do that in like Alamo Heights. It's about the only place people have that. Clavos are these little steel buttons. See that on the outside? See those, those are called clavos. And then these are called strap hinges. Ooh. Nice. If you wanted a second deadbolt, you could do that and add it on there. You're not gonna see it on the outside, but there you go. If you're doing multiple doors on one order, you need, in, in this case, we're doing a storm door next, you need to do key order alike. See that down at the bottom? Yep. So that'll make sure the door and the storm door come key to like. So we got all of our options figured out here. Now we're gonna go to the next. We're gonna go to next. Here with casing, um, really the only, this is interior. Just look at what they have and if they want the same thing, go back with the same thing. But when we, when we replace the door, we take everything out. Interior trim, exterior trim, jam, slab, which is the actual swinging part of the door, hardware, hinging, threshold, everything goes away and we build it new. And the reason we do that is you can tell people it's the only way we can control the integrity the entire integrity of the process. So if there's any point down the, down the road where you have a problem with this door, it's one phone call to one company with one responsibility and that's this door. So you don't have to worry about calling multiple people or whose responsibility is it or what's covered, what's not. We are taking entire responsibility for this, this whole door system. So ask them if they, you know, like this is the very modern trim, the flat trim. Colonials three and a half is very wide. What you're going to have in the house is three and a quarter or two and a quarter. We go a half inch or excuse me, we go a quarter inch wider on the new trim to cover up the paint line. So if you have two and a quarter inch colonial in the home, which is your standard trim size, you select colonial two and a half. If you have three and a quarter inch trim, you're gonna select Colonial three and a half. Casing species, generally we're gonna do poplar on some time. If you have an oak door or a mahogany door, it'll give you other options. Match the casing to the type of door. It's just a simple rule. Casing finish, it gives you a choice of all these different colors. Sometimes people want to match it. Sometimes they have existing trim that we're matching. 
<clears throat> so, you know, you just need to figure out what, what, what their intention is inside and what they want that casing around the door to look like. A lot of people have like, you know, beige trim, you know, or something along those lines. So if that's what they want, then do that. If they want it to match the door, they can do that too. But the base molding coming up to that door is probably gonna be wide or off wide or something like that. So just make sure they understand that that's not going to be white like it is now. The base molding is gonna be white and the casing around the door is gonna be the Windy City or whatever color you choose. Got it. So don't worry about base blocks, back bands. Don't worry about any of that junk. That's all installation stuff. So you select your casing, the casing species, the casing finish, and then you're done. So you hit next. Brick mold type. So brick mold is on the exterior, casings on the interior. If it's a super wide brick mold, you do three inch. Standard brick mold is two inch. And then you can go here, standard brick mold or flat. Generally, we're doing uh, standard brick mold. Now here, you're gonna select your threshold type. I did, Dwayne, for Ms. Smith, I did an, an ADA compliant threshold. It took us a lot of time. It would have been much easier just to give her this other one, but she's gonna love this ADA compliant threshold because she's gonna be able to get her walker right over. Yeah, I remember you going through that and finding it for, yeah. So now, because we're doing satin nickel hardware, we probably don't want to do a bronze threshold. We want to match the threshold to the hardware, right? Because that's one thing a builder doesn't do is we got antique brass hinges, we got satin nickel hardware, and we got a bronze threshold. So to point that out to people, hey, look at the builder didn't, he put absolutely zero thought into the hinges, hardware and threshold. I'm gonna make them all match for you. And it's a little difference, but it's a significant difference when the door looks like it was put together with somebody that knew what they were doing. You're gonna love it as compared to what you have now. So always match. If you do black hardware, you know, use a bronze threshold. If you do nickel hardware, use a mill finish, which silver threshold. you'll have a sample of this auto adjusting threshold. They created this threshold to meet coastal requirements. <clears throat> so as you can expect, coastal requirements, requirements are much more stringent than you know, the requirements we have. So that tells you about the threshold. It's much more, derb, uh, much more se uh, tightly sealed for hurricane and wind load reasons than your standard threshold. And the auto adjusting part means that it's going to fully maintain contact with the bottom of the door at all seasons, all, all, you know, all circumstances, because it's auto adjusting, it's going to maintain contact at the bottom of the door year round. So we got our threshold going on. Hinge type, we'll just stick with, you know, ball bearing. Um, spring bomb, bomber hinges are ones that self-close. So like, you know, some people have on their garage door where they open the door and it closes right behind them. If they want that, we can do it. And it's called a spring bomber hinge. Very, you know, you don't do that very frequently though. So most of the time it'll be ball bearing. Again, we're gonna match the hinges to the finish of the hardware. So it's sat nickel. On, uh, on outswing doors, the only option you're gonna have is stainless steel. So I'm gonna change it to outswing. Where are we? Yeah, so I just select the threshold 
and then look at on because it's outswing the only option i'm going to have is stainless steel one you only see the hinges on the outside so it's not as big a deal if it matches the hardware like if we did a black hardware stainless steel hinges don't really matter because then you're only going to see them from the outside what matters is if they are outside so they're getting wet they're getting exposed to the elements they need to be stainless steel make sense yes <clears throat> but you're very rarely going to do an outswing door like this. So I'm going to change it back to in swing, go back to our, now I got all my options back in hinge finish color. Hinged quantity is going to be three on an eight foot door. It'll go to four hinges automatically. You don't need to do anything. <clears throat> don't need to worry about installation kit. Security plate is standard. So this is a huge selling point with these doors, uh, where are you? There's pictures of your kick plate, mail slot, knockers, strap hinges, clavos, speakeasy, pet doors. You don't do those very often. Where's my security plate? Okay. It's definitely not it. There we go. So this shows you the security plate. So it's inside, it's, it's on the jam, outside of the jam, so you, it's not visible. It's a 20 gauge plate. And it, see what we're looking at? We're basically inside the wall looking at the door side, the, the lock side, the handle side. <clears throat> so when most doors are breached, this is the area that breaks. So standard is basically a 20 gauge security plate. So if somebody does try to breach the door, even if they don't use multi-point, you know, even if the door doesn't have multi-point, it still has this huge 20 gauge security plate for strength, right? Where the door is compromised most times when it's broken into. So that's a huge selling feature just for anybody, you know, even if security isn't one of their top things to say that our doors come standard with this huge 20 gauge security plate is a big deal. <clears throat> this is also a big deal on the bottom. You got four bulbs, or excuse me, three bulbs and two fins on the bottom of the door suite. And that's what's maintaining contact with that threshold at all times. Nice. Yeah, you still got up. So that's where you see security plate. It's standard. Floor to strength rating. Don't need to worry about it. It's not here. Fire rating, you don't need to worry about it unless they want a fire rated garage door, you know, garage entry door. Then you can select a 20 minute or a 90 minute. But you're going to have very few options in those doors because they have to be, those, the requirements are so stringent on how you make a door that can withstand fire for 20 minutes or, God forbid, 90 minutes. I mean, that's basically like a brick wall. So very rarely do we do that. So we got all these done. That's the last option there. Door used in an interior environment, not us. So we don't need to worry about it. I'm gonna hit next. Here, 
I'm just doing, you know, job name is going to be your client name. So it'd be Deuce, comma, Joseph. I'm just going to do, I already have a million tests. So unit name would be front. And that's it. Obviously one. Then I'm going to hit save. And we're done building this door. My retail cost. My retail cost is $67.94. And then all of these options are notated right here to the right. <clears throat> What's cool is this allows you, we'll, we'll do that after we're done because we still haven't built the storm door, <clears throat> but it gives you a really nice spec sheet that you can send to the client. Um, if they want something that shows what are all the options, how it was built, all that good stuff. But now we're going to go back in and finish our storm door. If you're going to, here's another thing. If you're going to build a door like this, don't put a storm door on it. You know, tell people, you know, look, you know, Joseph, Dwayne, you're paying more for this beautiful door. This is their flagship door. I mean, this door is going to be breathtaking when you see it on the front of your house. I would highly advise you to not cover it up with the storm door. Secondly, storm doors trap heat and they intensify sun. So a lot of people think, not a lot of people, and it, storm doors aren't ultra popular here in Texas. We do them, but very, very infrequently. So, but both of those are realistic things. It, a storm door is an extra barrier that traps more heat and exposes the door to extra additional heat. It also, because it's glass, it intensifies the sunlight. So basically you're buying this beautiful, I mean, these doors, this is the door we have in the office sitting right by the front desk. It's stunning. Like you can't tell it's not a wood door. It's beautiful. But by putting a storm door, not only are you covering it up, <clears throat> but you're increasing the wear and tear on the door. So I always have that talk with people when I talk about doing a storm door, just wanna make sure they know what they're getting into because it, you know, storm doors really aren't all they're cracked up to be. But for the sake of the drill here, we're gonna build a storm door. <laughs> so I clicked on edit. I'm gonna see the below the door where it says switch to storm door. I'm going to click on that and it switches me to my storm door. Now, these are all different series and I couldn't even tell you the differences. You know, I always have to look it up and I'll read it to the client. So I'll go to my Provia catalog and good reader here and storm doors was way towards the back. But what I do is if, you know, we, I just focus on style, you know, and again, if they have specific, most people, I just want to be able to see out my front door and I want to be able to have some air come in the front door, you know, in the front storm door. That's really what they want. So, which doesn't really require, you know, a super ultra fancy storm door. So I'll find out what they want, what their needs are. I'll have them pick a door, you know, style based on this, not even looking at, you know, I'll go through all these starting at Spectrum and make sure that I cover everything, everyone with them so they can choose which style they want. And that's where I go from there. But if you want to give them the specifics, then go to your door catalog in Provia and it'll give you a little blurb on each one. So here's the spectrum door. So two invent retractable screens, triple seal bottom sweep, one and a quarter by four and three sixteenths wide sculpted frame. So that sounds pretty high end, right? Yeah. If you wanted the, and then it has all your styles here. If you wanted the decorator, triple seal bottom sweep, one and a quarter by four inch wide sculpted frame. Decorator series provides a stylish, fresh look to accent your entry. <clears throat> and you can read that, kind of get a sense for where is this Spectrum series storm doors bring you smooth functionality, beauty, and durability. 
probably more expensive <laughs> just based on that description, right? Deluxe. Deluxe series is the answer whether you're looking for additional light, ventilation, or protection from the elements. Now we're getting kind of basic, right? Like, you know, we're definitely moving down the spectrum. Now we're going to a double seal bottom suite instead of a triple on the first two. And it's one and, quarter, one and a quarter by three and five eighths wide. So it's a little bit more narrow of a frame. We go to DuraGuard. This is like your pet series. DuraGuard is exactly what you need if you're concerned about keeping your small children and pets safely inside. <clears throat> so you get the point, right? But this is all in your catalog. You got to know where it is and use it as a resource if you're going to do a good job for your client. So you pick the door. In this case, I'm going to go SuperView is by far the, the least expensive. It also has the most glass which is why it's called super view. So now I'm gonna build it, I'm good. Do that. Standard sash, no sash. If you do, I don't know why it's giving me that. So just in most cases, you're probably gonna do standard sash clear glass, full screen, what kind of screen mesh, screen stabilizer bar, bar location standard. Hardware, they can choose which style hardware they want. Again, because this is a lower end door, you only have two options, right? If we went up to Spectrum, let's do decorator because full view, you, I mean, with this type of door, I'd, I'd significantly try to get somebody into doing a full view storm door instead of something that blocks the door, just because the, the how beautiful that door is gonna be. So your size would be the same as the door, finish, let's do nightfall, so it's a little gray like the door. No screen, clear glass, you can do low E glass, but again, that's even going to more so trap the, you know, trap the light in between the storm door and the real door. So I'm probably going to go clear glass. Hardware, I'm going to stick with my satin nickel. Let them choose which style they want. <clears throat> Looks pretty nice. Options, this is all, I mean, you don't want to do brass, maybe satin nickel. I prefer a color matched leaf hinge. That's what I do nine times out of 10. And that'll be instead of satin nickel, it'll be color matched to the door color. So it's not going to stand out as much. Bottom expander, you can kind of let Jim figure all that out. I usually just keep it on one inch color matched bottom expander. I don't even know what these are. Always, I just leave it on standard Z-bar. Pre-hung, leave it on pre-hung, hinge side. So obviously we want it this way to match the door, right? So you always want both sides of hardware on the same side of the door. I insulated frame comes standard on this. These you don't mess with. I don't ever play around with these. So then we hit next and we're back and to the same thing. What does no sash mean? I, I don't even know. I know you said that's not something that we would do, but if someone asks. Sides, uh, I did on the other side. Uh, hold on. You know, on the line. There we go. Um, what was your question? I'm sorry. So you had kind of the option of standard sash, no sash. What is no? What is no sash even? What does that even mean? I 
I'm not sure. Sash usually means can you like open it or whatever, but I don't know why it's showing up as an option on this. Maybe it's because it's, I don't know. Yeah. Hinge on left, set nickel. Okay, I'm just going to do the middle. What's also cool, see that warranty information down below? Oh, yeah. So you can click on that and it'll give you the warranty for the storm doors and the door, which you can print or email or whatever. But crap. To go back and find it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, so I don't I don't know to be honest with you why it's because this is a full view glass. If we go to the description. Color match, dual closure, standard sash, clear glass, no screen. I don't know. I don't know why that's giving us that. That's all right. I can Google it at some point. It's at nickel. We're doing this hardware. Generally, and the handle set prep, that's the height. Generally, you're going to do it at 39, which should be just below or above. I can't remember. I think it's above the door hardware so they don't hit each other. Um, leave dual closers on there. If it's a door they're going to be using a lot and coming, most people don't use their front doors. But if it's a door they're going to be coming through a lot, maybe do a heavy duty closer for them. But if it's just used, their front door is just used when somebody comes to the door, then, you know, leave on dual closers. Color match leaf hinge, one, one inch color match bottom expander, standard Z-bar, pre-hung hinge on right, I think was the right. See, so look at what it says when you select low E glass. Low E glass used in a storm door may cause excessive heat buildup. Provia recommends using tinted glass. Whatever. <clears throat> there we go. So now we got our door. Finalize. And I'm going to change this to front storm. And then I can save it. So my door cost is $67.94. You have to be careful. I don't know why I did it all oh, because I opened it back up. So if I don't want these options, I can either hit the little trash can right there, or I can just exclude it from my quote. I'm just going to delete it, get rid of it. Okay. So now my door cost is $67.94. My storm door cost is $19.18. My total price is $87.12. That's the price that you can deduct your discount off of. So we built a door and a storm door right there. Any questions on that? Not yet. Dwayne, are you still alive? Yeah, my head hurts a little, but I'm still here. <laughs> it's all part of the experience. <laughs> And that's why I'm recording this so you can go watch it again because you know I can't go any slower. We can't do this for three days because it's gonna your head's gonna hurt even worse. You're gonna have to go back in and watch it and just break it up into chunks. And really, the the best way you're gonna do it is just I want to familiarize you with the system, and you're just gonna have to do it. 
just experience is the only way to, to learn. Can't say it enough. I, I mean, it'll be the same thing when y'all transition to Hardy. It's going to be an overwhelm. It's going to be a lot of crap. And the only way you're going to do is just get out there and, and do it. Okay, so we're gonna move on to, I'm gonna go back and go to return. And now I'm gonna to go to gliding doors. Are we okay? Do we need a break or anything? I'm good. All right. Oh. Um, Unless you want one, right? No, I'm good, man. So now we're going to do a sliding patio door. These are probably a little bit easier. So again, we got patio door designer. We got brochures and videos, and we got photo gallery for Aris, which is their super high end, which are, I mean, I'm, I'm blown away by these Aris, Aris patio doors. They're, we have one over in the showroom, um, which we'll have to show you all this on Thursday. It's on the far side. Uh, Michelle used to be in there. I don't know if she still is, but that's an Aris. And they're stunning. Like they're just, I mean, Provia is super proud of their doors, which is why they charge what they do. But their their doors, their windows are okay. They started windows after doors. So their windows are okay. Their doors are off the chain, like unbelievable. So we're gonna go into patio, patio door designer. Aris is the high end. Indoor is probably the one we'll do the most. It's their mid to high range aspect. <clears throat> it's kind of wacky. Like you can build an aspect that's more expensive than an indoor. So it's kind of weird how you have to use it. It's meant to be a drop product, but unless it's a very basic, <clears throat> like white, white, standard size, nothing fancy. If you try to build some extra design or colors or something into an aspect, it's gonna be more expensive than an indoor. And then Ecolite is like Vistamark. It's the, in terms of cost, it's still a decent quality door, but in terms of cost, it's gonna be less than all three others. So we'll just build an indoor, like if you need somebody with, uh, that wants wood inside, Aris has real wood inside. It's not a faux, it's not a laminate, it's genuine wood and it's, beautiful i mean it's stunning but we're going to build an indoor because that's what you'll build 99 percent of the time we can do a two light a three light a four light a side light and a transom we're just going to build a two light because that's what you'll build most of handing again outside looking in so you got a picture of this we're looking outside or we're looking from the exterior from the yard at the house this one is a left-hand operable. This one is a right-hand operable. So think of it when you walk up to the door, are you gonna use your right hand or your left hand to open it? That's what the handing is. If we walk up to the outside of this door, I'm gonna use my left hand to pull it to the right. If we walk up to this door, I'm gonna use my right hand to pull it left. So that's how we do the handing. Side lights, none. We're not going to do a transom. Very rarely will you do that. I've never done it on a, on a gliding door. Size, we'll just stick with a standard of 7280, which is a six foot by six foot eight inch standard patio door. Click next. Here you got some different, these are all faux woods, but they still look really nice. So I'm going to do, let's call it, I hate oak. I'm going to do a cherry with a classic bronze exterior. Fine line welds, you wanna just keep, it's defaulted on, you can't even turn it off. That's those interior welds where the vinyl is welded inside so you don't get that kind of scruffy vinyl line. Oh my, that's terrible. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to glass. We can do our blinds in between because it's a standard size. If you get a custom size, we can't do blinds. <clears throat> we can do champagne, silver, tan, 
cream and white. With these colors, I'm probably going to do a tan or maybe even a champagne. Glazing system, I don't want to do clear glass. I'm going to do double low E. Top hung screen. These, all these doors have a top hung screen, which is great. <coughs> it's one of people's major complaints with a, excuse me, with a gliding door is that the, you know, if you've had a gliding door, you know yourself, the bottom rollers get dog hair, get dust, get dirt, get water, get all kinds of crap and they stop working and then the door's just sliding, right? Even though it has wheels it's supposed to running on, it's just sliding because the wheels are all gunked up. So here the screens are all hung from the top. So the screen is kept on a track on the bottom, but it actually slides from the top. So dog hair, dust, dirt, anything can't get in there and it slides from the top nice and easy. It's wonderful. Ryan, these are internal screens, right? No, these the blinds are internal. The screen is external. Oh, the, I got you. Screen. Okay. I'm tracking. That's what I meant. Blinds are internal. Yep. Okay. Screen mesh, better view is better than aluminum. C view is the best. C view is a really high transparency screen that like literally you can barely see it. <laughs> so better view is your standard. Well, aluminum is your standard. Better view is better. C view is the best. Which if somebody's going to pay for this kind of door, they're probably going to want a better, you know, a better screen option. So C view would be the way to go. So I click next. Now I'm going to select my hardware. Again, this is pretty cool, like modern stuff down here at the bottom. <clears throat> this is more of your typical hardware. I'm going to just stick with, again, if you're doing a dark colored door, <clears throat> generally, you know, the, the hardware is going to look better as like satin nickel, something like that. That dark, you can do it, but I prefer the satin nickel look on these dark finishes. On white, white, you know, bronze looks really nice. So does nickel. So you can go either way. But with dark colored doors, I tend to go like a silver nickel hardware. <clears throat> so I selected that. I'm going to click next. Always ship knockdown. Always AccuVent multi-venting system. So instead of the old little foot pull or instead of the putting a little wood down in the bottom of the track, an AccuVent <clears throat> is a specific locking mechanism. Right there. So I forgot the exact numbers, but there's two components to it. So a foot bolt, you know, the old school, while well, the old school is the little, put the, put the dowel, you know, the little piece of wood in the bottom of the track and that's how you keep burglars out. Um, the, the next step was the foot bolt. So it was a little bolt down here, kind of where this picture is showing right here. And there was a little bolt there that you actuated with your foot. So you kicked it to unlock it and you pushed it down with your foot to lock it. Oh, they have it right there, right here. So that little thing can withstand about 400 pounds of force. We don't do both of these. It's just showing, you know, the options. The foot bolt, you can do, it's a little less expensive. It only holds with, like I said, about 400 foot pounds of force. The AccuVent holds like over 800 pounds of force and it looks a little nicer because it's up out of the way. It's kind of inc inconspicuous. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then the way you actuate that is through a little latch on the backside face of the door. So typically nice. the AccuVent is a modernized locking system. 
So you can do it without the Acu, you know, the Acuvent, and you can elect a foot bolt. You can do neither, but I would say keep it on Acuvent. Again, because our inside is cherry, um, I'm going to stick with a bronze Acuvent system. <clears throat> Perimeter accessory, don't need to worry about it. Don't need to worry about A or B or C. You can do, again, if security is an option, you can select these two, it's gonna raise the price. <clears throat> it's gonna raise the price, but you can select those two options if security is a big thing. If it's not, don't worry about them. Again, with casing, generally with sliding doors, you don't have casing because the, the door fits inside the pocket like a window. Now they can do casing if they want it, <clears throat> but unlike a hinge door where the casing serves a purpose of covering up the jam, the space between the wall and the jam, with gliding doors, it's going right to the, the sheetrock, just like a window. So we don't need casing. So if you don't want casing, do none. If they want casing, talk to them about which option they want. You can hold a tape measure up and show them what it's gonna look like. <clears throat> yeah, cause you don't have a freaking lever. Don't need to worry about interior stops. Don't need to worry about jamming extensions. So we're clicking next which is gonna be finalized. Here on unit name, I'm gonna put back. <clears throat> but you can see the warnings, Accuvent finish and handle do not match because they don't have a satin nickel Accuvent. Um, internal blinds require four weeks additional lead time, six weeks total. <clears throat> so that's just something you can go over with them as you're building the door. So I got all this in here, I'm gonna click save. And now it populates to my file. We got 12 grand for that tour. <laughs> like I said, Provi is pretty proud of their doors. In most cases, like if somebody just wants a single color standard size gliding door, Marvin will be cheaper than Provia. Oh, wow. Yeah. So again, if somebody just wants, hey, I want white, I want bronze i want cashmere i want black standard size sliding door no no frills they don't but marvin doesn't do blinds they don't do anything fancy like that but if it's just a basic you know they want a good storm door or a sliding door marvin will be much less than provia <clears throat> what would what would this door in the eco light be. So with the with the Ecolite, so again, if I'm going to copy this door, all I have to do is hit edit, and then it's going to give me a whole new screen with all my formula, with all my populate, uh, all my options populated into this. So mm -hmm. I, if I wanted to say, they said, oh my God, that's crazy. That's insane. I need the cheapest thing possible. You know, it's going to be a rental home, whatever. So we'll build an Ecolite and you'll see the differences. <clears throat> I'm going to go through it quick. Look at with Ecolite, two sizes. So again, you should be getting the theme here. The more basic, the less capability. And that's how the cost comes down, right? If you have one color, two sizes, and three options, it's pretty inexpensive to produce. It doesn't mean it's a piece of junk. It just means it's very easy to produce because there's not as many SKUs. So here I got two sizes. I got one color. <clears throat> I got a couple different glass options. Let's just do low with argon. <clears throat> with argon. Yeah. Hardware, you got some really cheesy plastic options. Let's just do white. No ex perimeter accessories, casing, none. Interior stop, none. Jam extension, none. Finalize, I'm gonna change this to, cause if I save it, so here's, we just built another door like in 30 seconds. 
But if I click, if I hit save with back there, it's going to replace the other one. In fact, it'll ask me, do you want to replace the current door named back? And I don't. So I'm going to put back to or back option, either one of those. And now when I save it, it since I changed the unit name, it'll be an additional door. It won't replace the other one. <clears throat> but so here's the crazy put, thing. You can't even put blinds in that door. You can't do anything, dude. It's white. It's two, co it's two sizes. And that's all she wrote. Yep. But here's the thing is that the Marvin standard door of this size would probably be the same price, if not less. And really? it's there, it's, it's Provia's like most basic option. And it's going to be the same price as Marvin. The same price as Marvin with options. Is that what you're saying? Do what? <clears throat> the, same, the same price as Marvin with more options in Marvin. Uh, there's a few more color options in Marvin, but otherwise it's going to be the same thing. There's no blinds, no fancy stuff. If you go to a custom size, it's going to jack the cost of Marvin way up. <clears throat> but but Marvin would have like lock options and stuff, right? Yeah, you'd have much nicer hardware. You'd have a, a fiberglass finish instead of a vinyl, which is going to be pretty big Dang. difference on a door. Yeah. So yeah, if it's if it's a basic sliding door, you're probably better off going with Marvin. Hmm. But that's how easy, and when we get to doing windows here in just a second, it's that easy using this edit button right here to just copy and it's it's just like copy and pasting. So if I did Eris, did we do an Eris on that one? No, we didn't endure. Dang. So I'll build an error so you can see what that comes out to be. <clears throat> see, interior, we have oak, cherry, maple. I'm going to go fruitwood. Good choice. Good choice. I'll go here. Hardware, we'll stick with that. Never. Casing none, blah, 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 finalize. Back option two, save. So that's 14.5. So that almost jumped up two grand from the endure. But wow. this one is natural wood. You know, it's, it's natural wood inside and it's, it's I mean, as far as a gliding door goes, I mean, they're the nicest gliding doors you'll ever see. In the Eris, especially. But that, you know, you can see <clears throat> the Eris being the high end, it jumped up two grand on a $12,000 base price. So, you know, again, you should be getting the idea here. If you're going to sell a Provia door, you need to speak to the value of it because they're not inexpensive. They're not your everyday run of the mill, you know, average doors. <laughs> nice. So that's doors. I'm gonna get out of this and now we can go into windows. Do we need a quick break or? I have a quick question, Ryan. And I know this is probably a simple answer, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. You said earlier an outside door, an outside opening door is more secure. Did I understand that correctly? Outswing is the proper term. Outswing, outswing. That's when the door is gonna swing outward. And you're correct. saying that that's more secure. Yes. Correct? Because then, it cannot be kicked inward. But the hinges are exposed on an outside door, right? Right. Uh-huh. I guess I'm thinking from the security of being able to breach it, you would be able to have access to the hinges. 
Yeah, nowadays just, the hinges the hinges have lock pins. So it's not okay. like in the old days where somebody take a screwdriver and a hammer like you would inside your house to get a door off the hinges. No, I, I got you. I, I kind of figured there'd be more security in that regard, but I just thought with exposed hinges, it'd be easier to destroy them. That's all I'm thinking. No. Okay. I'm good. Cool. Uh, do we want to take a break or do we want to keep going into windows? I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. You sure? I'm as good as I'm going to be. <laughs> nice. So here, obviously, from the main home screen, I'm selecting windows now instead of doors, replacement windows. And again, you got photo gallery, you got brochures and window videos, and you got window designer. So I'm clicking on my window designer, and here we go. Not not complicated, but it is kind of tedious. Okay, but I'll show you how to, a way to kind of work that out where this could really be your best friend. Um, so Eris again is the high end. Endure is the mid high aspect. Again with windows, very rarely. In fact, I wouldn't even say you will. You probably will never do aspect windows because you have to dumb it down so much in terms of a crappier balance system, a crappier screen, and it's almost, it's still gonna be the same price as Endure. So you really won't use it. So really, you know, Eris will, you know, Eris is a genuine real wood interior, which is, you know, not in demand here in Texas. So you'll very rarely, maybe once a year do Eris. So really where we're gonna live is in Endure. You'll never do Aspect, it's not worth it. And the only time you'll do Ecolite is if you're priced in a house flipper or a rental or somebody that just doesn't care and they're just shopping on price. So really that's going to be, you know, that's going to be in the margins as well. Really the, the window you're going to deal with the most is indoor. And I'll give you some info. I'll give you some info to get you, you know, all squared away with Endure and what it is, the benefits, you know, so you can speak intelligently to it because it's what, it's what you're gonna use probably 80% of the time if you're doing pro <clears throat> Okay. So that being said, we'll stick with Endure. Here are all your options. Double hung picture, two light slider, which just means two pieces. A three light slider, slider means three pieces. A third, a third, a third. <clears throat> Let's just do this for visual. That's the third, third, third triple slider. <clears throat> a third, a triple slider, quarter, half, quarter. Looks like that. See how the centerpiece got wider? And that's a really yes. popular, that's a really popular option. Two light slider is just two, two lights. Light, L-I-T-E, means a piece of glass. It's, it's basically another word for sash. <clears throat> Fixed casement means a casement that's gonna look like a casement for aesthetic purposes, but it doesn't operate. A left hand, left hinge casement will be a casement with a left hinge. Right hand or right hinged will be a right hinged. Awning is a window that goes, is hinged at the top and it folds outward. Same idea as a, as a casement but as opposed to a casement being hinged on the sides, an awning window is hinged on the top of the window. So Ryan, it folds out. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the hinges, this is inside looking out. Left hinged means if you're inside the house, the hinge is on the left side. No, it should still right? be outside looking in. Okay, outside looking in, got it. Yeah, there it is. L O I O L I. Oh, there you go. Yeah, outside looking in. 
Okay. <clears throat> two light casement means it's two casements together fabricated in one opening. So these casements would hinge outward from the outside edges. So if, if that makes sense, both would be hinged in the center. Three light okay. casement in the same, a third, a third, a third, or a quarter, half quarter. Hopper windows, we don't do. Those are like basement windows. Garden windows, we don't rarely do. I'll, you know, if you call me about a garden window, I'll tell you to try to talk the person out of it. And that's happened. You can ask him both with Jeannie and Chris. That's happened. And Chris, Chris's went well, went very well, you know, because he opened people's eyes to, you know, a garden window costs about double the cost of a normal window and has all kinds of maintenance and efficiency issues. Um, you know, so he was able to talk them out of it very easily with Jeannie. It took a little more time because I don't think she grasped you know, kind of what I was, what I was talking about. Well, you just click garden window and there's not a picture there. What's up with that? Yeah. It, it won't show you any rendering. Okay. So we got circle tops. The heck? There we go. So we got circle tops, circle top with extended legs, half eyebrow, half eyebrow, right. Half eyebrow, extra long with the legs, half eyebrow right with the legs, full eyebrow, full eyebrow with the legs, trapezoid left, trapezoid right, triangle left, triangle right, octagon, operable octagon, which is kind of cool. There's no other window line that has that. Pentagon, full circle, quarter circle left, quarter circle right, Quarter circle with a leg, quarter circle right with a leg, gothic, gothic with legs, elliptical, single hung circle top finally, single hung full eyebrow, and then some other custom shape which you'll never use. So really what you're gonna do, there'll be, you know, if you get these, you hopefully won't initially. If you get these, if you have a question, it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, you'll do trapezoids, you'll do eyebrows, <clears throat> you'll do some quarter circles, but a lot of these we don't even do. <clears throat> so for the sake of everything, let's just keep, keep it easy for right now so we're not getting crazy, double hung. Go to the bottom of the page, doesn't show anything else. So I click next. 36 by 60 is your, it's always gonna be on exact size. And I'm gonna keep it at the 3660. Mulling, we're not mulling anything. I'll show you how to do one of those next. Color, you got all your colors here. So I'm gonna do white and coal black on the outside. see something real quick. Yeah, that's this jacked up part. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, colors, we got white, coal black on the outside. Uh, I think that was everything. Go to the bottom, make sure it is, nothing glass we're always going to do dla uv see that selected not this not that always dla uv you can do blinds in the window don't recommend it never have done it so glass strength you can keep that on single laminate no if you need to temper it guess what you do just click this on and you're good to go <clears throat> We're not going to do tempered for this guy. Grills, if you want grills, you can build them this way. Contoured, see like the picture? 
these are going to be interior inside of the glass but they have a little contouring to them as opposed to this is just flat see from the picture sdls stands for simulated divided light so these are going to be like meant to look like you know kind of colonial traditional grills where it's going to be outside the glass and it's going to protrude away from the glass surface so it's going to look like a truly fully divided light and if i'm understanding correctly i, I was doing a bunch of terminology studying last night so mm -hmm. all of the other stuff besides the simulated divided light is goes in between the glass whereas the sdls are outside the glass correct okay yeah and those are the only three you'll use mm -hmm. is contoured flat which you'll never use flat because it looks like garbage so really you're going to do contoured or sdls that's it. You won't use pencil grills. You won't use the V groove. You know, it's just not, not normal. So we'll put these grills in just for the sake of building it. <clears throat> Ryan, uh, and you just tell me if you want to answer this or not. Uh, do you ever have to explain those things in the home? Like when you're walking through the design, I guess if you're walking around the house designing each of these windows, you've kind of gotten the idea of what they want already in the consultation. Yeah. Yep. You'll, okay. you'll know all that. And, you know, generally people don't want something on the outside of their glass because it makes it harder to clean. Okay. So generally you're going to do the in-between grills in between the glass is what they're called <clears throat> and you're going to do the contour which has a nicer profile than just the flat so it does it gives the look of the depth like from the street like looking at the home uh -huh. which is which is what you would get with the sdl it's just inside the glass so it makes it easy to clean correct so achieve the same purpose that's what I was about to ask. So when you're cleaning it, you have a smooth surface to clean. Am I correct? Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. So moving on inside the grill color, it's going to default to your color of your windows. You just got to be careful because there's only some, there's only, when you're doing grills in between the glass, there's limited colors. So you got to be careful that you're not doing some grill, some color that we can't do an interior grill on. They like it, it, they used to only have like white and sandstone. So it's increased quite a bit, which is a good thing. But what you're saying is, is that there's, there's basically, there are more colors for frames and sashes than there are for grills. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because look at all these colors. Yeah. And then look at the look at the grill colors. Right? It's not nearly as many. So the point you just made is make sure that you're able to match them. Yes, correct. Because of the limited uh, balance there. Correct. I got you. Okay. So we, our grill colors, we have the white window with a white grid. We got a black window with a black grill on the outside. So I'm clicking next. <clears throat> Compound tension is the better of the two. Constant force is a cheesy, very cheap balance system. We don't, don't like it. So use the compound tension always. And what is the difference when you're moving the window? Uh, I'd have to show you the balance system to the constant force is like, it almost looks like a tongue, you know, like from the commercials when like the, you know, the tongue unravels, you know what I'm talking right. about? I got you. That's what it is, but it's a piece of metal. Okay. With the compound tension, that's the block and tackle. So it's just a better system is what you're saying. It's more doable and more reliable. The compound tension is yes. Constant force then, is a downgrade. 
Is it cheaper? Yes. But you're suggesting not to even go there because of its unreliability. Correct. All right. So meeting rail. So here's, here's a, I mean, this is just the cheat sheet. Any window 59 inches or less, or call it 60 inches or less, it's gonna be one-to-one, -one, meaning equal top, equal bottom. Once you get over 70 or 72 inches, or, or anytime you get over 60 inches, generally that goes to a split, an unequal split. Definitely when you get to 70 inches, unless it's some really old school like wood window, they're going to be a modified split. And what that means, like this is a weird, you know, top third. It's usually bottom third, like that. Like if this were a 72 inch tall window, that's generally what we see. Is that. The other option on 60 inches or less tall is just equal one-to-one -one right there. Okay, so if, you're, so if it's so if it's over 60 inches, we're gonna we're gonna do bottom 40%. Generally, yeah. Okay. Or bottom. Yeah, generally it's a 60-40 or a three to two split. So it's generally this, that goes a little bit lower. And if I remember right, Ryan, uh, you said something about windows with shutters. You gotta be careful on these kind of windows because it won't match. Did you say something about that yesterday? Yeah, on Marvin. On Marvin, okay. So on Marvin, anytime you get above 66 inches. Right. Unless you're doing a single hung. The only thing you can do is a one-to-one -one split. But Provia gives you more options on the shutter so it can match? Correct. Well, look Everybody at that. does. Okay. okay. Everybody does except for Marvin. Okay. All right. I'm with you. Marvin's right. the only one that has that crazy, you know, anything over 66 inches in a double hung can only be one-to-one. -one. Marvin's the only one with that craziness. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it equal since we're only a 59 inch tall window here. Lock color, the inside of the window is gonna be white. So I'm gonna leave the lock color as white. Lock quantity, it'll all de default to double hung or double lock. If you want single hung, it's not gonna change the price. So this is a weird thing with, with Provia is that it doesn't change the price to go to a single hung. Every other window, well, yeah. Sunrise, Marvin, you know, which were windows that we had that we sold that both had double and single hung. They had a price reduction for a single hung. <clears throat> Here with Provia, it's going to be the same price whether you choose double hung or single hung. <clears throat> so just know with Provia, if you're looking at Provia and people say, oh, because not, you know, every other window company, it's less for a single hung than it is for a double hung. With Provia, it's not. So if, if somebody tells you, oh, yeah, you know, is it cheaper if I go to single hung? Well, generally, yes. With Provia, no. Window opening control device is like a little night latch. It's, it's really, unless somebody asks for it, it's just a piece of vinyl that can break off very easily. Like I said, traditionally it's called a night latch. And it's really, it ain't keeping anybody out at night because all you have to do is grab that bottom sash and push it up really hard and it's gonna break those latch, those locks.
So I'm going to deselect that, replace glass with insulated panel. I don't know when you'd ever do that. On a double hung, you always want a full screen. On a single hung, you always want bottom screen. We're doing double hung, I'm doing full screen. You always want the extruded screen frame. And then screen mesh is gonna be defaulted to see view, which is the best. Don't need to worry about screen mullion or screen ships, screens, uh, ship screens separately. You just leave both of those alone. So I'm gonna hit next. Installation option, it's nine times out of 10 gonna be none. The only other one you'll use is stucco flange. But here, we're just gonna say none. <clears throat> so Nail for, is like so for standard, standard siding and brick, we're using none. And then Correct. for stucco, stucco flange. Okay. Correct. Interior installation option, don't need to worry about anything. Just, uh, yeah. Uh, interior installation, none. Perimeter app. None. Neat port insulation is going to be st standard on, and that's a specified, it's a specific insulation that's in the frame, and it helps with energy efficiency. So we got all that. I'm going to click next. Trim system, none. Bulb seal color, I didn't even see that. Let's <clears throat> uh, see what's the options. Nope. Oh, there it is. So bulb seal, um, that's that, you heard me talk about bulb seal, bulb seal on our window demo yesterday. So I'm probably gonna do the bulb seal as black. It doesn't change the cost whether you do it as black or white, but I'm probably gonna keep it as black. Some people actually want that to stand out. <laughs> um, no, they, they really want it to be concealed. Okay, so I mean, you're going to match it to whatever color the window is. Correct. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to finalize and I got a couple warnings, but you know, we're all good. And here's a little blurb. The bulb seal is on the exterior of the window. Make sure the bulb seal color is the closest match to the coal black exterior, which is what I did. <clears throat> custom color windows require eight weeks additional lead time so so now i'm going to name this bedroom one and click save and we are good to go is anything that's not white white a custom color no Okay. White, Santone, beige, uh, I think there's bronze. one other. No, bronze is a special color. Okay. But white, Santone, beige, those are all standards. Okay. So that window, you know, for a 305, it was 25 to 19. That's pretty good, you know, it's pretty good chunk. And that's our retail price, right? Correct. Okay. So our pricing is inside this system. Yes. Got it. So now with Windows, we just built our first one. The cool thing with Windows and the cool thing with this app is this. So now I'm going into bedroom two. All I have to do is click edit. And if bedroom two is the same size, obviously it's gonna be the same color. All I have to do is go to finalize and click bed, click on the unit name. See that how I selected it? Backspace and hit bedroom two and then save. 
Now I got my bedroom one and bedroom two, see that? Yep. So once you build that first one, now I'm gonna to go to the master. So I'm gonna hit edit again. My master windows are 36 by 70. So I changed my size. I don't want them one-to-one -one split because I know that's not how it's gonna be. <clears throat> so I'm gonna to go to bottom 40%. And now I got, that's what you're going to see with your 70 tall, 70 inch tall windows. Is there going to be an unequal split like that? <clears throat> Ryan, if you have um, three windows in a room, uh -huh. how, what do you, I mean, do you just do bedroom one dash one and then yes. bedroom one dash two? Okay. Yeah, because we can't just do quantity. So I'm going to put this as master. So I'll show you what we do. So I'm going to change this to master now. I can't just change this quantity to three because Jim needs specific measurements for each of the three windows. Right. So if I just show, put them in as three, it's going to show a three quantity, but it's not going to allow him to put in different measurements. Yeah, so he, he needs to be able to go in and edit each window specifically we won't be giving specific measurements for each window on his right. tech measure he's gonna okay yep so if i have three windows in the master i just did my first one that you can see in the screen right now i'm gonna go edit finalize up in the top right corner i'm gonna go master two hit save and i'm done so it's as easy as that edit finalize and change the <laughs> that's name. it okay you just have to make sure tempering egress all that junk Okay. That's the only yeah. potential threat here is that it's so easy and it's so quick to go edit, finalize, backspace on master two, put master three, hit save, and I'm done. But that's the temptation is it's so easy that you could miss very easily. Oops, that one has to be tempered. Yep. But that's how you do that. So that's why building Provia windows is fairly easy. <clears throat> um, I told you we're gonna do a mullion. So um, we'll do that. And then I think we'll pretty well have windows covered and then we may take a break. And then the last thing we'll do is the firewall, which again, I'll walk you through it once, but it's all, I have a whole video segment dedicated to how to enter windows, windows on the firewall. <laughs> I, I have a quick question. I don't mean to make things confusing. If it is, just say you don't want to answer. But so for Jim's sake, how, how do we, so let's say there is four windows in a bedroom. One of them is egress. We've been in the home and have selected which one that makes the most sense for. How do we communicate that with Jim? Is that installation notes or is that something in this app? Or is there a video walkthrough? No, you don't need to do anything. You just need to build a window to the egress criteria. So, but how does he know which one is? Like, because our map, our, our pictures and company cam are going to correspond to this, this ah, lineup. I see. Okay. So window three would be the one on the roof, not the one that's 35 feet to the ground. So company cam is, is where we make those those notations correct well okay. no you don't even need to do a notation all you need to do is number the window because this this cataloging or this titling will match company cam so, so we'll, we will title each picture essentially you'll title each window you'll number each window okay okay that makes sense and actually, now that I'm thinking of it for company cam purposes, <laughs> I'll have to ask. I forgot where we landed on that because it was a while ago. I think we would go one dash master, two dash master, three dash master, four dash living room, five dash bedroom one. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah, then so, those one, two, three, yeah. four, five will match up with the numbers that you label in company cam. <clears throat> 
I'm so the total sure number of windows in the house will be the, the number of windows that we title. That basic, I, I, I'm, I'm understanding what you're saying. I, yeah. That makes sense. So now if we're mulling something, we do that a little bit differently in here than we do on the firewall. So we just finished the third window in the master. Now we're coming to the living room. And we have three 30 by 70 windows that are all mold together. What I mean mold together, that means it's window to window. There's no wall in between. There's no board in between. There's no jack stud in between. We literally have window mold right to the next window. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Yes. So I said we have three of them. They're each 30 inches wide and they're 70 inches tall. So what I'm gonna do to create that opening is I'm gonna go to my width and I had three windows, 30 inches wide each, that's 90 wide and my height is 70. So I got the size of the entire opening, not per window. What, what do those three windows all measure in that opening and it's 90 wide by 70 tall. Now I'm gonna to go to my mulling and I have a cross configuration and I have up and down configuration. I'm obviously three side by side windows. So I got a cross. Okay. See that? <clears throat> I'm gonna keep them as even, there, they, very rarely would you do this, but I'm gonna keep them as even. And then you can click on these different ones. To change the, the configurations. So color, we got color, glass, we got grills, we'll do cottage. Okay, so we just fix that. <clears throat> now we go to windows and we go bottom third on all of them, no, bottom 40% on all of them. And now I got them all configured the right way. But this means we're gonna get this unit from Provia looking exactly like this. Like all three windows will be molded together and they're going to come as one big ass opening. Nice. Man, that's cool. And you do the same thing if you have windows that are vertical mold. I can do one of those right for you right now. So we're done here. We know we got our options right. We got our casing, we got our front. <clears throat> And I'm gonna go four dash living room. Save it. And there we go. So now let's do a vertically mold. So I just had this. Did you just, did you just hit edit? Is that what you did? Yep. Yep. Okay. To pull up a new to pull up a new window. So here I'm gonna do, let's keep it. No. Let's do 48 by 84. <clears throat> so it looks all kinds of crazy now, but mulling, now I'm gonna do a vertically mulled window. So I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna go here. <clears throat> so here I'm going to do a, B1 is going to be a, circle top and a1 is <clears throat> going to be a double hung just as it's shown now here i won't be able to change the grill configuration on b1 because it doesn't it won't let you do that i don't think or at least it used to not to yeah so it won't show the grill in there
it must be half the width. It's 48 by 21, so it needs to be 24 tall. So I need to add four inches to the height. Must be half the width. It'd be 44 by 88, maybe. That's what I just had, and it's still giving me that. No, you had 48 by 88. Because then it would need to be, I think, 96 tall uh, or 92 tall. Or, I think that's weird. No, it should have been 48 wide and 24. <clears throat> 48 times 2. Oh, my Lord. So it's 96 tall? Is that? So this should be 40? 70, so it would be 94, would be 24. So, oh my gosh. 48 by 23 and a half. Perfect. Oh, good Lord. Hey, hallelujah. There it is. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so now you can see, because you will do these, you know, and this is again, something we can't do. Here's one of these sunrise things. Before with sunrise, we could build this as one window without this big nasty bar in between the vertical rectangle and the half circle above it. That used to be one window. We can't do that with Provia. It has to be two which is a crap ton more expensive. And it, you know, aesthetically doesn't look as nice as having that circle top integrated into the bottom window. But that's one of those big things that we do see a lot that we used to be able to do with Sunrise, we cannot do with these guys, Provia. But anyways, we got all this, we got all this. We still have our grills, even though it doesn't show it. <clears throat> we still have grills in both windows. It's just not showing it. Are you saying we have grills in V1? Yeah, it just doesn't show it, see? Oh, I see. I see the style now. It shows it, but it doesn't show it in the in the uh, picture. Right. I got you in the rendering. But we but priced. You, but you could so do it with no grills in there if you wanted to, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then okay. we just go back here. Glass run. See how only B one is selected. So I'm hitting mm -hmm. no grills for B one, and we're got good it. to go. Nice. If I wanted no grills in A1, I select A1, come down here, no grills. Okay. And then it would just be this, 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 and then save. So I'm going to do here instead of four, I'm going to do five living room. See that? Yep. And then hit save. Wow, that's an expensive window. Yeah. But it's big. Yeah. <clears throat> so again, you know, that's without going overboard, that's it. I'm almost positive this is the way I told everybody to label it. It's like five living room, four living room, and then that four and that five will correspond in company cam to your labels four and five.
Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And that way back to Deuce's original question about the bedroom, knowing which one is egress, it all makes sense looking at company camp. Correct. And just to try to make it as crystal clear as possible. So if, let's say you started in the living room. You basically would have one dash living room. And if there were three windows in the living room, you'd go up to three. And then if you went to the dining room, it would you would you would start with four dash dining room, five dash dining room. Correct. And then into the bedroom, you'd go to six, right? Yep. Okay. It would all be sequential. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so on and so forth. Okay. It would all be sequential numbers, even though they may be different rooms. So you don't start over at one when you nope. go to the next room. Okay. Negative. And it's all just based on where you start, I guess. Which room? No, no. So yeah, we didn't cover that yet. So when you measure a house for windows, the way you do it is you <clears> go in the front door and you go to the left. What's the first window you come to? Do we talk about this? We haven't yet, but we have as a team uh, before. So you walk in the front door, look to your immediate left. That's the window you start at, that's number one. You go clockwise all the way around the bottom floor of the house until you get back to the front door. And then you go upstairs and do the same thing. Find the front door area where, the, where it would be upstairs. Look to your left and that's the window you start with upstairs. You go clockwise and you end at the window closest to the opposite side of the front door. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So you start immediately left of the front door, go clockwise downstairs until you get back to the front door. Take that front door area and drive us, draw a line right up to the top, second story. Look to your left, go clockwise until you get back to the area that's close to the front door. And if you do it that way, I mean, I think I've told y'all stories of ride alongs I've been on where it was jumping all over the place. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't, I don't even know what just happened. You know, because it was like, let's go to this room, let's go to that room, let's go to this room, let's go to that room. And it was just chaotic. That's how you miss windows. That's how you miss commission and piss off your clients. So if you follow to a crazy degree that process, you'll have less chance of missing windows, less chance of screwing something up because you're following the same process every single time. So... I, I follow what you just said. I have no problem with that. So when you're taking pictures in company cam, you take them in that order also? Well, you should really only be needing four pictures, so it doesn't matter. It's easiest, yeah, if you can do it, take a picture of the front, take a picture of the left, take a picture of the back, take a picture of the right. That would help with you numbering pictures easier. But it doesn't matter how you have them in there as long as the numbers match the proper places. So listening to you, and again, I, I, I don't know if I'm asking the right question here, but when you're taking pictures in company camp for a window project, you're always taking them from the outside? Correct. Okay. And it's not of the individual windows. It's the front of the house. It's the left side of the house. It's the back of the house. It's the right side of the house. The only time you'll need more pictures than that is if you have something, you know, obstructions where you can't get to a certain area. So you may have to take two pictures for the left side, for instance. Okay. So but generally, in case, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Generally, you want as few pictures as possible. So in a case of a two story house, you're just still, you're just taking the front, the side, and you're getting both stories. Correct. All right. <clears throat> so that's that's pro via entry link doors storm doors windows it's a lot but with repetition it becomes a lot easier than what it just sounded like 
I'm going to hold you to that. Good. <laughs> no, I believe it. I, just, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so really the last thing I had on our list, which we're pretty much coming up on perfect time for that. Yeah, I figured we'd finish about 2.15. Does that give you all time to get to your appointments? Yes. I'm just going to double check my GPS here in a minute, but it should, yes. <laughs> um, so we're, we're pretty, pretty much in good shape. I want to walk through the firewall quickly. Um, again, because there's a full video I already did on that, so I'm not going to really belabor it, but I want to walk through it just high level, different pages. How do you build windows? Um, how do you build doors in there? You know, it's probably going to take 45 minutes, maybe half an hour, <clears throat> but that's the last thing I want to do, you know, is for the sake of today. Um, and then I'll have some homework for you with the window presentation, you know, to watch that segment on the YouTube training video and then do a couple firewalls. <clears throat> but um, that, that was it. So how do you all want to do it? I know you need, you know, if you're going to run straight from this into an appointment, do you want to take like a half an hour lunch break? You know, I want to get through this stuff and I'm, I think we're in good shape. If we took a half hour, that's getting us back here at one and then we'd have a full hour and 15 minutes, which we don't need to go through the firewall. But I do want to be sensitive, you know, and, and know that y'all are going to an appointment right after this. So I want to give you time for lunch, or, you know, whatever you need. So what do we want to do there? That's fine with me. I'm 23 minutes from my appointment, so it's not too bad. Yeah, if we if we call it a 215 drop dead, you know, I think that's that gives you time to chill out and still have a few yeah, minutes gotta, to do whatever. I got to shave and make myself a little pretty. That takes time at my age. So do we want to call it, take a half hour, get back on at one? And Sounds then good. we'll bust out the firewall. Works for me. Okay. All right. We'll see you back at one o'clock. Yeah.